Hello, I'm Ellen Kleckner. I'm going to be showing you today how to make a very simple reed basket. Before we get started, we're going to review our tools that we're using today and materials. We're going to have half inch flat reed for our stakes and quarter inch flat reed for our weavers. Our stakes will create the base and then be turned up and go directly vertical of the basket. Okay, we're now gonna get ready to start um, weaving our base. So I'm gonna actually pull out the reed from my trusty pot. I work with a lot of towels around me <laughs> because it's a good way to catch the drips of the reed and pull it out. I'm not trying to dry out the reed, but rather um, just kind of get all the extra drips out. You notice too that I'm working on a plastic table. This plastic table, um, to me, it's great to work on because it's um, it's really easy to clean up, especially as I have I'm working with water and damp things. I also have a just plain. Um, concrete floor in my studio that is easy to clean up. So you'll see I have six six reeds that are going to be my thicker half inch and these are going to be my stakes. So it'll be my floor and then turn up to be my sides. So I actually like to go through with my thumb and just pull the opposite direction of how these things are stored in the pot to help straighten them out just a little bit. overall helps just kind of get rid of that a little bit of that extra curl that's in there. Sort of counteract it so that they lay as flat as possible, which flat is not possible in baskets, but it just helps them just really kind of gently trying to coax that fiber back. Okay, so my half inch reeds are all cut to 24 inches and I'm going to be working on making a square base with these through an inner woven pattern so that they lock together and then we'll turn up these um, stakes to become the side, the foundation for the walls that we will then bring our quarter inch weaver in and make the walls on. So I want to start by taking two of our spokes. I'm going to place them about a quarter inch or well, they're going to be um, one and a half inch apart. Roughly. Okay. You notice that this is ultimately enough space to get another reed in between. I'm going to then take another reed and halfway on this one, I'm going to put, place it halfway in the middle of this one, so going over the two. This is now my center stake, and I'm going to bring in another stake on this side and this side. Before I do that, I am going to, if you notice that this is going over the two, I'm now going to simply lay another stake on top and this so it will go over, under, over. Now in order to be able to secure this, I need to bring in and weave the same way over, under on either side to make it an interlocking pattern. So this is over on this one, so I'm going to simply go under and then over and then under again. And at this point, you just want to get the interlocking pattern and everything in, and then we're going to kind of move things around and make sure that they're well spaced and everything in between. 
So this still, you need to have at least three, both directions to make the interlocking pattern. Right now you see we only have two and three and this would easily fall apart if we picked it up. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on this side. I'm gonna go first in and I, you can, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. I'm gonna go under, then over and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lift up this other one and go under again. And right now, everything's where it should be in the weave, but it's not spaced right for the basket. You see how we have a big space over here, small space over here, and this negative space that's been created is different. It's, it's more of a rectangle here, more square over here. We want those all to be the same. And we want overall, okay, so I'm gonna actually work on just kind of pulling these over. Those actually look like they're pretty, they're, they're pretty even to me. You could go even tighter if you wanted, but this is just kind of a little catch-all herb basket, so I'm not concerned about it being too tight. So I'm gonna make sure I have a little bit of space in there. And then I'm gonna go overall and just measure about a half an inch. This is short right here, so I'm gonna pull this down. that better so what I'm looking at what I'm measuring is this square because these will get turned up to become my wall so this square right here is my base so that is one and a half inches square and overall pretty evenly spaced with my negative spacing in there I'm looking at what I'm measuring is this square because these will get turned up to become my wall so this square right here is my base so that is one and a half inches square and overall pretty evenly spaced with my negative spacing in there okay now that we have the basic weave for the base done we're gonna go ahead and turn up all four sides to help us then start forming our walls. So we're gonna start by taking a spoke, pressing one finger against the, right along that edge in that line, taking the spoke and then turning it up gently. We do not wanna break or crack the reed, but rather give it a very gentle blend. So we're gonna go all the way around to get that nice bend in it. Rotate to each side. So it's especially helpful to keep one finger on that line with the spokes that are on the top, like this one. The spokes that are on the bottom, you can use the line created by the um, spoke that goes over the top of it to give you that bend. So you see right here, I'm just using that as the gauge. All right. You can see too, my strategy in getting these turned up is not to simply take it and force it upright. That's gonna result in breaking a spoke. I'm just kind of gently coaxing these guys upward. And remember that this is still a well hydrated, well soaked, um, all the reed, so it's still very pliable. If you take some time between the base and the turn up, you'll need to re soak the reeds. Um, you also can, um, some people keep spray bottles near them. You also can just take, I have a little bit of water that I put on my finger. And I'm just putting it kind of in those areas that I'm doing the turn up to. Okay, now that I have those all sort of pre 
bent, I'm gonna go around and in each corner, take the two corner reeds, turn them up um, and use a clothespin to keep them in place, just to kind of make reinforce the idea to the reeds that it's gonna be going up. And I will leave these clothes pins in place just for a couple moments. I don't want the spokes to dry out, but as I'm preparing my weavers, this is a really great way for um, me to kind of start the, the reed in the right direction. Okay, we're gonna start the weaving process now. This is a basket, another one that I'm working on at the same style, but a little bit bigger. We're gonna start to work on what's called the wall. So we're going to, and then this being a weaver. Our weaver is a quarter inch thick and our spokes are a half an inch thick. So we're going to take a weaver directly out of the water. It's been soaking for about 20 minutes. You can see it's really, really pliable. And this is my quarter inch, so it's half the size of the spoke. I'm going to actually start, because it's such a small basket, I'm going to start directly with the weaver in the bottom. I am going to cut, I'm going to go about a half an inch back and cut a small taper. This is so that as we start at the bottom, we're not going to have a big chunk that we're missing, but rather a general um, gradual kind of lead into this um, shape. This will also be repeated when we finish on the top. So our wall will end up even rather than one side being higher than the other. So this is where it gets to be a little floppy, but I'm going to be working with you guys on this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull off all of my clothespins. You can see that I have a general upward motion now in place of um, those basic spokes. Just from giving it a few moments, I'm going to start on the inside with my weaver of the basket so that it's protected and it's not kind of on the outside flopping. I'm gonna start on the inside, which would be over, but I'm gonna go under. And right now, I'm not gonna worry about squaring my base. I'm gonna get about three rows in before I start to do that. So I'm gonna go So right now it looks pretty loosey-goosey, but as I start to build up a couple more rows, I can then work and move it back into that square bottom. We are gonna go ahead and actually take a break right here now that I have the first row done. I'm gonna go ahead and put my clips back in my clothespins. Just to make sure. Okay, now that we've had the first kind of round 
row of weavers in, I went ahead and split one of the middle spokes. I simply did this by taking one of the, the middle ones, I cut it down with scissors to create two spokes out of one. This is a critical step to the weave pattern that we're doing of over, under, over, under basic weave. You need to have an odd number of spokes for it to work out um, correctly where you're going over, under. If you're even, you will um, run into the, the um, trouble of at certain points, you'll have to either double up or you won't, um, you won't match that weave. So we're gonna keep going around here for another three or four rounds. As I'm going around, a really good thing to remember as we're looking at the side is that we wanna be going over, under, over, under, all the way up, but also side to side. And that's why having the odd number of spokes is gonna be critical because that'll then just let you flow and you can just weave and that'll happen naturally as a pattern. Okay, so we've gotten to a point in this weaving where we've actually um, run out of weaver. So we need to add another weaver to this basket and we're gonna work on actually um, basically hiding the connection in the interior structure of this weave. It also is a really strong um, connection. So I like to always do a connection point on the middle spoke. So it's not necessarily on a corner, which always need to be stronger and tend to get moved and shifted around more. So I will cut the reed back so that on the interior, it's gonna fall right on the inside of the basket of a middle spoke. So I'm ending on the inside of a middle spoke. I'm taking my new reed and I'm actually gonna weave back with this new reed a few different spokes in order to really kind of um, capture it in. So you can see I'm going to, I'm actually going to be going in front of the weaver that just ended. And then I'm going to be going back at least one, if not more. spokes. So right here you can see how the end is captured between those two and then it's actually hiding this one here. And then I will just continue to weave. Okay so this is gonna be the last little bit of our weave up before we put on the rim. I'm gonna go ahead and Cut this back at an angle similar to how we had the um, when we started the angle. I'm gonna make it a little bit sharper of an angle there. Or gradually of an angle. And then I'm gonna take this time to go around and really just make sure that I have an even walls all the way around that I'm packed down and that any kind of adjustments I might want to make to the spokes to adjust the shape, this is the time I'm going to do it. And we're going to be using the same reed, which is a half an inch reed, to um, be a rim to kind of hold that together. So we wanna make sure that we're stopping far enough from the top that we can have a half an inch and then come back and 
fold it back around as needed. Okay, so now that we have our base and our walls, we're gonna finish the basket off by adding a rim. The rim helps to secure and hold everything into shape. There's all different types of rims. Um, it's very common too to have a um, wood rim that's been bent or formed, but we're making a very simple basket today and we're just gonna use the same reed that we use for our spokes as our rim. And we're gonna go around three times. So this has been soaking in water. And I'm gonna and I am going to go on the top line of where my walls are. Where well, that's where I'm gonna have the top line of my rim. So I'm not putting the rim above the walls, but rather on top of that. I'm gonna go back to adding my clothes pins. And three is a little thick, but I really like the look of that compared to the lightness of the foot. So I'm gonna take my clothes pins and just secure that in both locations. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of the spokes at the same height. I am gonna be bending these spokes back over to secure the rim in both directions. And because of that, and it's been out for a little while, I'm gonna bring back my water and I'm actually gonna turn this upside down and have it soak upside down. Okay, so now that this has been soaking for a few minutes and it's a lot easier to bend, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our little basket and we're gonna bend over our spokes. Our spokes, if on the interior, we want to catch this last ring. So if on the interior, the spoke is needing to go over the top and catch it this way. Then we're gonna actually start to just bend it back around. And then so if these two are going over it's because we wanna Make sure that it's catching that row there so it's holding it in. The next one will be going in. So we're gonna kind of get all those going. Okay, so at this point, we have secured the rim with the spokes, but it still is kind of loose. So we're gonna take weavers and lash the rim into place to really secure it. And this is where a, um, a small tool or a weave rate, um, the end of a um, scissors or the end of a knife can really come in handy because we're gonna be taking our weaver through the first row will be a space right there and the rim. And we'll actually really sort of wrap the rim to bulk it up and give it um, space. So we're gonna start this by putting the weaver between the rim and the first row of space right there to start. Then we're gonna have about two, three inches 
of that weaver through that hole. You'll bring it up and then put it down between the rim and the wall and put it down so you're gonna pull it. And that's actually gonna secure and work as an anchor for the first weaver. Now we're simply gonna go in a wrapping motion over, under, over, under the rim. Making sure that we go in between each of the spokes with our wrapping. So now take your knife or your tool, secure that location. Okay, we have completed our little basket.